Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to tell you about another part of the, the pocket knife world that I absolutely love and that brings me joy, and that is the modification um, of knives. Because in many ways, pocket knives offer a, a relatively simple mechanical system that is pretty straightforward to customize and is within the reach of a lot of people at home. Uh, and so there, there are a lot of cool customizations, and I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the modifications that exist out there in the world, um, both uh, from the home DIY level as well as from makers directly as well as from intermediate modders out there in the world. But actually, before I go any further, I do want to say something very important here, which is that modding your knife is not without risk. And I'm not advocating that you do any of the things I'm showing you off here today. A lot of these things have been done by professionals, in many cases by the knife makers themselves, um, or by somebody who knows a fair amount about the pocket knife world. But it is very, very straightforward to screw up the aesthetics of a piece while trying to mod it, right? To make it look really, really ugly. I have 100% done that in the past, right? I tried to make a modification, and it turned out all horrible. Um, th 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 that can be a thing. You can also affect the function of the piece negatively. You can try and do something and then suddenly it doesn't work as well anymore. And it's worth remembering that even a really good maker should still, like, you can't expect the maker to fix something that you broke trying to modify their knife. Even the best maker in the world, I, I would say, should expect, or should be expected to charge you to fix something that you broke. So please, 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 don't think it's the maker's responsibility if you screwed it up. And if, the, if you want their help, offer to pay them for it. That's the way to be the good uh, the good person there. And then most importantly, um, it can actually lead to safety issues, especially if you're modifying things like detents, if you're modifying things like lock bars. If you're starting to play with that world, it is very straightforward to make a very safe tool very unsafe. So this is a risky business, right? It's a good idea if you're doing more extensive modifications to work with somebody who is a knife maker or who is a dedicated knife modder with a very good reputation, etc. Think very carefully before you do any of these kinds of, well, okay, some of these things are pretty straightforward, but do think very carefully and anything you do here is at your own risk. I'm not advocating you do any of this at home. I'm just showing you some of the things that can happen from some of my own collection. One of the things that I think you probably can do at home without hurting yourself too badly is just very simple. Modifying a clip. This is the Spydeco Delica. This is Stan, um, my, my specific one, size comparison, Spydeco Delica. But uh, one thing most people don't realize is that this is modded, actually. This comes with a black clip. Uh, originally out of the box, the, the, this comes with a clip that is painted black, and I don't care for that. I don't think it works well with the aesthetic of the knife, and I much prefer this. And so when I first got it, I took some sandpaper and I just did this, 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 over and over again until it looked like that. That was much better, right? It's a very simple mod. It's something that you can do at home, but it, it definitely does make a difference, and it's a, it makes me much happier with the piece. Every time I buy a new Delica, step one is to sand off that clip, right? Uh, just because I like that aesthetic a little bit more. Speaking of sandpaper modifications, this is an open L number eight, and uh, I don't like particularly using a nail nick, and so I just used a bit of sandpaper and did an easy open notch on it. Just kind of uh, took a little bit out of there, hogged it out, and you know what? It worked great. Um, and so it's a little modification. It's not affecting anything particularly important with the knife. This is literally just a single chunk of wood, but it's a thing that you can do to customize it, to make it a little bit more yours. And open L's are a very good um, place to start with modding. Just don't leave it in the vinegar oven night like some jackasses do. Um, another thing that you can actually do is uh, a little bit more factory, but um, this is a, a knife. This is the Ontario Rat number two, size comparison. This was actually sent to me by a viewer um, who had it engraved, like lays it on there. And laser engraving is a thing that a lot of companies increasingly are offering just as a part of the checkout process. Like, would you like to put something on there? Um, a lot of good retailers are doing that. Uh, just, it's kind of a cool idea. It's not necessarily something I recommend that you do everywhere because the resale value of it goes down a little bit when you do something like that. But it is a way to customize your knife and to modify your knife in a, a way that is, again, very risk-free, but makes it very much your own. And so that's something that a lot of folks choose to do. You can get a little bit fancier with it. This is a Spydeco Shaman. And we're going to go ahead and put aside the fact that the scales here aren't factory. We'll talk about that more later on. But one of the little things that I've done with this guy is I added a sharpening choil to it. Um, it normally, the sharpened edge comes, well, actually kind of dies right about here. And uh, that, that, that to me is not necessarily ideal. So I actually took a little diamond rat tail file and just ran it back and forth in there until eventually I ended up with this little cut out there. It's a little tiny modification. It doesn't take a whole lot, but it does make sharpening this a little bit easier. And that's an example of something that I would feel comfortable doing myself because I've done, well, a number of these kinds of things before. Um, another area actually that's getting increasingly uh, hot, so to speak, is um, kind of factory custom versions. This is a Spydeco PM2, um, and this is the River's Edge cutlery version of it. 
This came out of the box like this, but as you understand, most of your average PM2 is going to come out with black G10 scales, a different plate. This is a sprint run sort of an affair. Well, actually, this is not strictly a sprint run. This is just an exclusive, but they've gotten a version that's made in a different steel with a different color blade, a different color handle. This is something that you can buy out of the box. It is a modification of the Para 2, but it's something you can get directly from, in this case, that one dealer when they are in stock. And so that's yet another kind of way to modify, but you're not actually doing any of the work yourself. You're just having the factory make some versions that are modifications of the original. You can go a little bit fancier with it, though. Um, you can take something that exists and anodize it. So, actually, this knife is doubly modded. These scales here are titanium aftermarket, and then this uh, little, the blue in the background, and this little gem has been anodized on there. They have used an electric current. They passed it through the titanium. That actually changes the surface of it such that it takes on a coloration. Um, it's a really cool process, right? And uh, this is something that, again, you can do at home with training, etc. I'm not sitting there advocating it. You need some materials, but it is a thing that a lot of folks offer, and a lot of things, you know, my buddy Josh did this, and it looks really great, right? But this is something you can do to any piece that is in titanium. Again, be careful, but uh, anodization, changing the color of something in titanium is not actually all that difficult, and it's something that a lot of folks end up doing. And actually, speaking of scale swaps, um, this is a knife with a different set of scales. The normal scales actually are plastic, like this. Um, he put on a set of titanium scales, and then, it, well, actually, he just sent me the scales, but he anodized the scales. But there are other ways that you can swap out scales. Um, some knives actually support it from the factory. This is the TRM Knives Neutron, an amazing little pocket knife. But one of the cool things about this is they have actually designed this knife so that scale swapping is very straightforward. This screw here is what controls the pivot of it. And then these two screws in the back here actually allow you to uh, loosen the scale independently of the knife. I should now, yep, I can just lift that scale right off. And then I can take this other set of scales. In this case, um, these are scales from Match Anderson. Uh, he's a, a guy with one of the coolest names on earth. But anyways, then I just put those screws back in, thump, thump, and they're in. Boom! Problem solved. Um, it, it, it's a really cool little uh, approach here, and it allows you to mod a knife with absolutely no risk. There is no problem doing this because literally there were two screws. And I'm pretty sure that most humans can run a screwdriver twice without screwing anything substantial up. So that's one approach to modifying the, the scales. A lot of knives allow you to do that. In fact, here's another example of this. Um, these are the uh, This is the we knives banta here but actually, uh, the, the, the Ben, uh, the, the guy who does the NAFs, it's K-N-A-Fs is the name of the company, so NAFs. Um, but anyways, he has this, um, he, he put out a set of scales that have space kittens on them. This is amazing, right? I love the sense of humor of it. And it, 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 they're things you can just buy and you can just drop into place. All you need to do is take the thing apart, put in new scales, and it works. These are direct from the factory. It's the same guy who designed the knife, um, but it's a different set of scales. It takes a little more effort than the DRM here, but it's still, you know, 10 minutes worth of work and easy to do at home. Um, you can also get aftermarket scales that are being uh, made by other people. So this is a set of scales on the Benchmade bug out from a company called Flytanium. Um, and their, their specialty is making, well, at least it historically has been making titanium scales, although they, they do a bunch of materials now. But this, or the bug out originally comes with a set of relatively, come here, bug out scales, uh, relatively plasticky uh, sorts of scales. And, um, they made a set in titanium that are absolutely beautiful. I'll come with the gem that was... Uh some creative anodization. But nonetheless, this is a thing that you can do. You can swap out scales for things made by an entirely different company uh, for that particular pattern of knife. And here's another set actually also from Flytanium uh, on a Spydeco Paramilitary too. So these are the same knife, but when you add in a different set of scales, it becomes a very different beast something entirely different. When you want to start getting more advanced, there are other things you can do. This is a Spydeco Paramil uh, Para 3 Lightweight. Um, they Cool little knife, uh, very interesting, but uh, the original uh, knife steel it comes with is, I believe, BD-1N. This is not the original steel. This is Maximit, um, which is a very hardcore steel, very interesting steel. But um, I actually, I have a video in which I, I showed you, basically, I, I disassembled a Maximit PM uh, Para 3, that is, the regular version, and I just swapped the blades back and forth there. It happened to work in this case. It does not always, right? You have to be very, very careful with this. This is a, the blade is a matter of fitment. 
right? Um, but nonetheless, it is something that you can occasionally get away with, and in this case, I did. And so as a result, I have a knife that is not a factory configuration, even though they have factory parts. It's a blade from one knife, a handle from another. Sometimes you get lucky, and that works. Then there are modifications that are a little bit more involved, right? Um, for instance, this is another example. In practice, um, so this little cutout here is not stock. This is a Great Eastern Cutlery 99 pattern. But again, I really dislike nail nicks, and I wanted the ability to reach in and grab a little bit more. And actually, a buddy of mine, a Toad Sticker, did modifications of, uh, of these kinds of GECs, and I saw that he did one for somebody. I said, hey, dude. Can, and this was a long time ago now. Um, but I said, hey, dude, can you d d do that on my Wall Street? And he did. And as a result, I have the easiest to open GEC Wall Street that ever existed. Um, there were no other knives exactly like this one because that was done by hand. Um, it definitely, at this point, you're taking a lot more skill. You're really needing to... This is not something I... Yeah, I probably wouldn't be doing that one in my garage. But it is definitely a modification that takes a little bit more doing. Here's another example of that. This is the, um, the Protec Malibu. And it originally came, this particular knife originally came with a bright blue uh, anodized titanium shiny handle. And uh, to me, that didn't work as well with the Damascus. And I saw, in fact, a piece of this and uh, sent this off to a buddy at EC Gear House. And they um, blasted the thing. They also dyed the backspacer, which was originally an olive drab. And ended up... Uh, so they de-anodized it, changed the finish and whatnot, and the knife is entirely different as a result. This is a much more involved process than just anodizing, right? There's a lot more work that went into this from somebody who is a professional knife modifier, really. Um, but there is a lot more work there. Um, then you can get things that are uh, a lot more skilled. This is Monterey Bay Knives EZC uh, 2.0. And then you turn it over and you realize that, holy crap, this spent a little bit of time with Bruce Shaw, who is an absolutely amazing engraver. Um, the, one of the top of the game, so to speak, and I am a big fan of his work. And it's so this is just a good old fashioned factory knife, except that it happens to have a. Uh, uh, you can see his signature right there. Um, but it happens to have this very nice engraving pattern on there that is put in there by hand with an engrave with engraving tools. That's a really cool thing. This was done, actually, this was done by the factory. Monterey Bay reached out to him and did this directly and then sold them to people. But nonetheless, it's a cool idea. And it's a type of modification that is not particularly structural, but requires a great deal of skill. If I sat out to do that, it would look terrible. And so again, that's it's a different kind of mod, but it is very much a mod. Then you get kind of complete modifications. And this is a, a very cool example. And actually, th this came across my desk today, and it's a, um, it's a unique piece. This is a Spydeco Paisan. See, it's Spydeco, and it's based on the, the Peter Rizanti Paisan design. But Spydeco Paisan is a, uh, it's not a small knife, but this one actually is. This is a Paisan coming in at 3.25 inches. What happened is they ground off the top of the blade. The blade, they removed a whole bunch of blade length on here, and they removed a bunch of blade in the back as well, and they drilled a new hole for a different clip. This is a near-complete reworking of the knife, and you can see here at this point in time, they are just barely to the edge of the lock bar here. It is, this is as short as this knife is going to go, but it is a very unique piece. You end up with something that is very unique, that is very different, and is entirely different in character than the original Paisan, and it's kind of cool. These are serious modifications. Again, do not try these things at home. It's it, 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 This gets dangerous quickly, but it is the kind of thing that can happen, and it can happen well if it's done by somebody with sufficient skill. And then you get companies that whose specialty is modifying to your taste, right? Um, and this can be in many different ways. I mean, actually, I guess another example of this would be like the companies who have uh, configurator tools, so to speak, that would allow you to put, for instance, a set of bright neon green scales uh, on a knife and then laser on skulls, and then if you are my Patreon patrons who want to troll me in the most heartwarming of ways, have them laser engrave Nick Shubaz trash operator on the back of it. This is a thing that you can do. Um, some factories allow <laughs> customization in this way um, to any variety of taste. Some factories, though, specialize in customizations that are a little bit more tasteful. Um, and actually, a Lamech is a really nice example of this. Um, one of their slogans is like, never the same. And you know what? Yep, pretty much. Because all of their knives come off the factory floor with a different set of customizations. You can reach out to them and have them make something like, oh, cool, I want a backspacer that looks like this, but I want mine to be, 
you know, uh, anodized green, and I want my clip to be, you know, purple, and I want, you know, uh, an orange stripe, and I want, you know, uh, you can have all kinds of crazy things done with companies like this. And so as a result, you can end up with a piece that is, this is an Alemic whippersnapper, by the way, um, but this whippersnapper is different than other whippersnappers because, well, it's been hand-customized. They've done some things, but again, this is all from the factory. So you can get something that is unique, but it's something that is still factory and with a factory warranty and stuff like that. It is fundamentally a whippersnapper. Those parts aren't changing, but the rest of it is, and they're willing to, you know, go with that. And a lot of companies are doing that, like MBK is another company that's doing a lot more factory modding and things like that. This is, I'm sorry, this is a Benchmade barrage. <laughs> but uh, anyways customization from the factory is an increasingly cool kind of thing out there. So anyways, these are all different examples of kinds of modification that, you know, you can have done to pocket knives and some of them you could do yourself. Again, at your own risk and please, 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 if you modify something, remember, that only that not only means you are never returning it, but it also means that anything you do to the piece is your problem. Don't expect the maker to help you and if they do offer to help you, then, well, okay, if they agree to help you, then expect to pay them fairly for your time. Because this is definitely Definitely, uh, th th this is dangerous ground, so to speak. Uh, so anyways, there you go. Um, it's one of the many reasons I like these. These are, you know, it's not like a laptop that you can't really modify without probably breaking things. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that later on. I got an example coming that might be a little different. But nonetheless, I, uh, th this is a whole different world. And it's one of the many, many reasons why I really do love the world of pocket knives. So I hope this has been interesting to you and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and that this video modified your attitude. Uh, okay, bye now.